a question from Nyata Thomas. Was Steve Young's sixth touchdown performance in Super Bowl Twenty Nine the greatest individual performance in Super Bowl history? Well, it certainly ranks right up there, Mike. And I remember that one. And you remember when he pulled the monkey off his shoulder and, and uh, threw it down because he'd finally done what Montana did for the 49ers. Uh, they're all, all my top ones are all 49ers. I mean, you look at Jerry Rice in Super Bowl 23, the 11 catches for 215 yards and the touchdown. And the Joe Montana and Dan Marino Super Bowl in 84, that was probably the greatest quarterback matchup that we'd ever seen up until this year. But Montana was outstanding in that game, 331 yards and, and three touchdowns, and he ran for 59 yards and another touchdown. So those would be probably my top three from the offensive standpoint. Of course, Von Miller had the great game a few years ago, but those were outstanding performances, all three of them. Peter King mentioned the Marino and Montana matchup from Super Bowl 19. It ended up being very, very disappointing. Uh, it was a blowout win, 38-16, to 16, yeah. I think, was the final score of that Super Bowl. The win at Stanford Stadium by the 49ers, close to home, but not quite home. And it's funny that I'm thinking of Peter King because the Steve Young Super Bowl, Peter tells a story about Steve Young throwing up red Gatorade all over, all over Peter's, I think, shoes or something. <laughs> I, I can't remember exactly where it happened, but it's an unpleasant story that he tells from time to time about his experience with Steve Young that night. Um, when, when I think of great individual performances i can't help but think of terrell owens from super bowl 39 yeah. nine catches 122 yards best player on the field that day still had a broken bone in his leg from the roy williams tackle in the regular season the cowboys safety the rule would be named for him the horse collar tackle rule and shereen i've been talking about and thinking about to a lot now because it it shows me how much our attitudes have shifted. They haven't completely evolved, but they've shifted because Terrell Owens wanted greater financial security from the Eagles after he played that heroic Super Bowl. He wanted more guaranteed money from the Eagles. Their attitude was, you've signed a contract. Too bad. Tough crap. Deal with it. And he became incredibly disruptive until the point that they kicked him out of the building and eventually released him. But uh, fans were much less forgiving to T.O. in 2005 than I think they would be today and that I think they will be for Deshaun Watson wanting out of Houston. There's no question, Mike, and it's a great point because I remember him doing sit-ups in the driveway and all those things that he was doing, and he was really uh, harshly criticized. And we haven't seen that from Deshaun Watson. Now, I'm sure there are Texans fans out there who are mad at Deshaun Watson right now, but we're not hearing the criticism of Deshaun Watson for asking for a trade because we're more used to these trade scenarios perhaps than we were back then. I think part of it too is he hasn't said anything. He hasn't done That's anything. Right. It's just reports. And I think that maybe if you're an Arden Texans fan, you're just hoping that if you ignore it, everything will be fine and everything will be normal and training camp opens and Deshaun Watson's there. I have a feeling that's not going to happen in part because I have a feeling he's going to be traded before that all comes to an end. But players have more rights and greater power than they ever have. And I think that's good for sport. I still don't know why Shireen, the fans line up with the billionaires against the millionaires, because if anything, you can identify yeah. with the players, not the billionaires who live in this alternate reality. Isn't that the truth, Mike? Let's side with the millionaires instead of the billionaires every time.